Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And I'm very busy today, planting. I've just cleared this bed of uh, corn salad, or lamb's lettuce. And I've taken all the mare's tail out of it. Mare's tail is the biggest problem, weed problem anyway, by far on this site. Um, and it's always difficult to know what to do with beds that are infested with it. You can't dig it out really because it's deep in the roots of this pear tree for example. Um, so you just have to keep picking it out. Anyway I'm going to plant parsnips in this bed and I know it's not ideal but basically this is the bed that I've got. I'll just keep finding mare's tail. Anyway, I've watered this with six watering cans and it's still dry two inches down. <laughs> so I need to do some more watering. But uh, parsnips are a first for me. I've never really grown them before. And I was watching Nigel on the Muddy Boots channel yesterday and he was chitting his seeds. But I'm not chitting my seeds because I always like to try the easiest method first to see if it works before I add any sort of complexity into the process. I am chitting my uh, sweet corn though because I do find that I do struggle to get consistent germination of the sweet corn and it takes up a fair amount of space so I want to uh, be sure that I've uh, got viable seeds and I'm planting sweet corn today actually and I tested those seeds. Anyway I'm happy with that as a seed bed so now I just need to give it a bit more water, a little bit of compost and uh, we're ready to go. So apparently it's three seeds every eight inches and then you thin them out to one. And so that's about one centimetre deep. Seems quite a big space in actually eight inches doesn't it? But Anyway, that's what it says. Now let's just do everything equidistant, so that will do. We're having a lot of problems at the moment with all this heat. A lot of plants growing too quickly, a lot of spinach bolting, even newly sown spinach, spinach is bolting on me and the uh, plants are you know only about one inch, <laughs> one or two inches high so that's a bit of a blow. Hot sunny weather is not universally an advantage for gardeners especially slightly inexperienced ones like me who haven't seen such a hot early spring as this before. And there are actually masses of seeds left over, so uh, I might end up trying and chit in a few anyway. I'll just put my labels in. I always just pick up little bits of stick off the ground and use those to mark my rows. So that's done, happy with that. Giving it a good water and I think I'm going to put some hessian cloth over the surface here because it's going to get very dry with this hot sun and it's quite windy as well. It's the kind of worst recipe isn't it for drying things. 
So just like carrots, I think best to keep the bed moist. And then this bed, which has supposedly got spring cabbages in it, I don't think these are going to heart up. So I think we'll be harvesting these for spring greens over the next couple of weeks while we wait for the kales to uh, be ready. And I'll just close that up, gives it a little bit of shade. I'm not convinced it actually protects from the uh, carrot fly, but we'll see anyway. So this is another bed of uh, spring cabbages, and some of these actually are starting to heart up, so I'll give these a bit of TLC. So that's better. Just got rid of all these dead and dying leaves, and just gave them a bit of a feed with uh, Blood fish and bone meal. This looks a bit of a purple tinge to some of the leaves. And this bed is eventually going to be a carrot bed in June. So uh, I'm going to try and keep the weeds down in it all the way through. Make sure nothing seeds. Carrots are just the worst crop for a weedy bed. Anyway, I think that's done. So I'm planting the carrots now and uh, this is the cover that I put over the carrots. Um, it's, it's really a shade cloth I think but it's quite tightly woven and it really does work for keeping the ground nice and moist uh, which is essential when you're sowing carrots because especially in this sort of weather, sunny, windy. Uh, and no rain, uh, the, dry, the ground really dries out so quickly. And since the carrots are only planted about a centimetre deep, um, you know, it's just almost impossible with uh, only one visit a day to keep this bed nice and moist. And this just works an absolute treat. I, uh, it, it's just as moist, basically, as when I left it at sort of 12 o'clock yesterday. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about how I prepared this bed. So this was previously cabbages, uh, winter cabbages. Um, there was plenty of compost for those cabbages and bloodfish and bone, bit of uh, chicken manure pellets, whatever. Uh, so there was, there's some residual goodness in the bed after the cabbages. Uh, so I've not given it any more fertilizer, uh, but what I have done is just given it some seaweed meal for micronutrients. Um, when the cabbages come out, they have big roots and so the result is that the ground is nice and friable and I just fork it over a little bit more around the edges where the cabbage roots weren't um, because carrots do like a nice friable soil. And what else have I done? Leveled it off, given it a good weed and then put this compost mulch on top. Um, there's only about three quarters of an inch, something like that. and. That's, it's just perfect because it gives a, provides a nice environment for the carrots to germinate in and then they're straight into the nice sort of mixture of compost and sandy soil that this uh, bed is, uh, contains. And what else? Uh, oh, and of course it, it also, um, it's sterile. So there's no weed seeds in here and that's really important because I don't want to keep having to open the bed up to weed it. Um, because then I'll be letting the uh, carrot fly in. And these are from last year, these fence pins, and these support the net uh, that protects the carrots from the carrot root fly. So well, let's get on with the planting. So hopefully you can see put the drills in and I just make the drills with a little piece of wood just by uh, pressing it in in a V shape and I find that's really nice you can get the carrots in a really nice straight line and I always think carrots you know they benefit from a little bit of precision and a little bit of uh, TLC I'm sewing these Eskimo 
from Mole Seeds and they're a winter carrot. And I do tend to pre-water the drills, even though I think it's a myth. Basically, I think that the reason people say pre-water just the drills is just because of weeds. But if you're using a compost mulch like I do, then uh, you could just water the whole bed and it would be fine. But uh, it's easy enough to do, so why not? And after I've done that, I will just shape the drill again with a bit of wood. Otherwise you find that things are always being planted at different depths. And it's kind of useful to plant at the same depth, I think. And then you only have to thin out once. Now this whole bed running all the way down to where the spinach is at the end is going to be uh, winter carrots and we won't start harvesting these until next year so January time uh, through to April time and uh, that's the time that our early carrots should be ready. I normally like pelleted seeds unfortunately Eskimo isn't available from moles anyway, as a pelleted seed. So I'm gonna to have to pay a bit more attention than usual to this. And I will have to do a little bit of thinning afterwards. And this bed actually is one of the few beds that isn't open at the bottom. Almost all my beds are, um, but the carrot beds are lined with um, landscape fabric. Uh, but I've dug a trench underneath them before I, I did the lining. So um, you can get a good sort of nine or 10 inch carrot growing before it hits the, the landscape fabric. And that's because of the mare's tail. It's really not consistent, you know, a bed that's infested with mare's tail really isn't consistent with growing good carrots. So, uh, needs must. And then using the most important gardening tool I possess. Just uh, try and get a consistent coverage over those carrot seeds. Now when it comes time to thin in these carrots, um, it's really, there's a weed, it's really important, um, well I think it is, to try and make sure you don't attract the carrot fly. And there's a few things you can do for that. So one is put your thin in straight in water. Um, do it quickly. Before you start, spray all over the place in the, in the area with the garlic spray or something like that. Something really pungent to make it difficult for the carrot fly to smell the damage that you're doing to the leaves when you're pinching them out and hopefully, and then of course make sure subsequently it's all netted and that's pretty much it. So next up I'm onto the sweet corn. I'm going to plant this in one of my deep coal frames. I mean it could probably go outside at the moment without any protection but uh, who knows what the weather's going to do in the next few weeks. So uh, anyway, that's where it's going. I'm planting nine plants in that bed. 
So that's where it's going. I gave it a good water yesterday, so it's probably dry now. Anyway, I'm going to get on. Change my mind. I've got 12 plants, so I decided to squeeze 12 in here. And I realised that I grow three um, sweet corn just in a 30 litre pot. So there's easily enough uh, soil volume and nutrients and water here to grow 12 plants. So uh, anyway, we'll see. So that's the early sweet corn done. Quite a bit of growing for it to uh, get through before it uh, outgrows this cold frame. So I can actually keep the lid closed if the weather turns. I've got a few more plants to put in a container in the polytunnel and then that's my early sweet corn done. And as I said, I think earlier, my main crop, sweet corn, is just uh, chitting at the moment. So I've got some char there and my early baking potatoes down the end there. Um, and this chard will probably be gone to seed by about June time and that's when my sweet potatoes will be going in here. And then this lid will just move along here to uh, these potatoes will be harvested in early July. Um, so uh, yeah, the sweet potatoes should be covered for most of their life. So next up is uh, New Zealand spinach and I need nine plants. And I'd be lucky to get nine plants out of this tray actually because they're not very well rooted for some reason these. Uh, anyway, I'll show you where I'm putting them. So they're going in this bed. I did have lettuces in here but I've just harvested nine of them. And uh, yeah, this is another coal frame. Uh, New Zealand spinach does thrive in the heat. And again, it's an issue of we don't know what the weather holds in the next month. So, uh, yeah, now this, this crop is quite important to us because I think I mentioned the New Zealand spinach doesn't bolt in summer, but the true spinach is all bolting at the moment. So uh, I need to uh, get this in as quickly as possible. My goodness, that was tricky, getting those plants out of those pots. They had to be so gently teased out. Anyway, hopefully these will grow on under the protection of this coal frame and we'll have all this lettuce and spring onions harvested uh, within the next couple of weeks and uh, these little plants can grow on uninterrupted. Uh, next up I've got these extremely leggy beetroot but not to worry, beetroot amazing at recovering from uh, legginess, you just plant them deep enough. So they're going in this bed, first we've just got to harvest these little salads and uh, there's my peas, moist two peas at the back of this coal frame. So now we're on to the beetroot. Deeper holes than usual. You can see, hopefully, still quite dry. Even, uh, you know, quite a few watering cans and it's only uh, watered the first few inches. So I'm, I did the holes deep. I've got my little watering can. I'm going to fill these holes with water. This is a tricky job at the end of a long day. So that's the planting all done. I aim for an average of three um, plants in a module. And sometimes I get four and sometimes I get two and occasionally I get one. And I don't mind that at all. In fact, I think it's really useful because it means that when you're harvesting a bed like this, which is a continuous harvest, so we'll just be taking, you know, four or five beetroots a, a week or something, uh, you actually want them to all come at different times. So you want some with just one uh, beetroot in and they arrive first and then the ones with two and three and whatever. And of course you can also just take the biggest from a bunch of four, uh, but the biggest from a bunch of four is always smaller than uh, than a single one. So uh, yeah, we really like that. But when we do our beetroots for storage, because we harvest all of those at the same time in October, we only do um, two uh, seeds per module, aiming for two plants. Because we want to harvest them all at the same time, we don't want a mix of small ones and big ones. Just put this little net over, keeps the birds off. I find the birds are in there, rooting around for worms and uprooting the plants at the same time. Plus it just gives them a little bit of shade and shelter from the wind. That's me done for the day. Hope you like this quick planting video and I'll see you soon.